Work 85 back for part two of our tree stand setup. Have a couple of things we're going to put on right now. Then we're going to take it down to the farm and get it set up in the tree. We've got the two lower legs painted. I'm going to show you how I did that in two different styles. This is actually tubing you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or some of the home improvement type stores uh, to go around some of the metal on the, on the stand here. Uh, we do have the shooting rail that goes in the front, but as you can see, it doesn't cover everything as far as the rail itself. And uh, the deer always going to come exactly the way you have the stand facing, absolutely not. So I'm going to put some more of this, which is basically the exact same thing that comes with it. I'm going to put it on, and because two things, one, uh, to stop clinking, as you can hear my ring on the stand, it sounds like a tuning fork when you're in the woods and you clink some metal against your stand and it dings and it just seems like it goes forever out there. And the other piece of it, when this gets cold, you're standing at say 30 degrees or zero if you're in Canada and uh, the metal gets cold, you don't want to be leaning against that. So you put some of this on here to, uh, to help with insulation and also that back bar that I was talking about uh, in the first part that gets very uncomfortable uh, lean it against. Uh, I'm going to put this on here that's going to help quite a bit. Yeah, it doesn't make it perfect. Again, a little bit different of a design back there. A little bit more of a flatter design for the, for the stand itself would be a lot better. Well, first thing I'll do is go ahead and get the, the shooting uh, rest on the rail pad that came with it. And, and then I'm going to put some of these extra pieces on. When you're putting the rest of the rail on, uh, you, you may want to just go ahead and put a tie wrap or two around it, uh, just so it doesn't move on, it doesn't start sliding back and forth uh, up there so it's not in position. You know, certainly don't want to make that noise sliding that in the woods. So I'm going I'm to put one tie wrap on it right in the middle. Can't really move it anymore now for that tie wrap on there, so you may want to think about doing that. Let's get the camo cover on. That rail is on there, and you can see there's a lot more rail up top here that you can clink, lean against. Pipe insulators uh, for your actual home come in certainly a lot, come in handy. Go ahead and put them on here. Now I've padded the top of the rail and the back here, uh, which is that's a nice piece where you can lean against where you're not gonna, you're not gonna quite feel that bar hitting you. Uh, use some tie wraps to hold them in place. Another thing you wanna bring with you uh, have a roll of duct tape here. It's a camo duct tape. And if you don't want to use the tie wraps on here or you're not going to put a wrap around the complete top like I am, uh, if you want to use some of this duct tape to go ahead and hold this in place, you can certainly do that too. Uh, you also want to bring that roll of duct tape with you when you're setting your stand up or your first few times in, in your stand. Uh, in case you find a, a part that starts squeaking on you, uh, you can use this duct tape to certainly help alleviate those squeaks in your stand. Uh, it's always a good idea to have a little, at least a little bit. Here's our middle section of, of our ladder or our steps. And we're going to do this in moldy cam. I have my paints out. have just a piece of wax paper that we're going to use as a backing. And a roll of the green painter's tape. And I'm going to be putting the painter's tape down across the wax paper and then cut in some patterns out of that for the moldy cam. Just overlapping a little bit, about a quarter inch or so. And now I'm going to cut some designs out of it for the, the moldy cam. Now some guys will actually draw the design on there. You can actually just freehand with your scissors and they come out fairly good. So I, I save yourself a little bit of time and just get with the scissors and, and start to cut. And once you have that piece you can certainly go back and make some changes to it, maybe get out some of the roughness, some of the straight lines that you had when you cut. And I just think it's it's a lot easier doing it that way than to draw something onto the paper and then try to follow it. It, it just goes so much faster. Well, I have my stencils cut. Unfortunately, if uh, Mr. George Washington will leave these alone and not chew them up, I'll be able to put them on the stand. Come on, come on. Come on, stubborn. 
off. But let me see if I get him to stop eating all my stencils, and we'll go put them on the ladder. Well, here's the top of a feeder that I painted in moldy cam. I just was experimenting with it. I have the stencils on there. That's the uh, green painter's tape, the frog tape, I think it is. Now I'm going to get the brown and repaint the whole ladder. Painted the next coat, the dark brown. Uh, the next step is to put some more stencils that will actually create this brown. And you want to group your tan and brown stencils for the most part together. Now I have the green stencils in place, that which will actually be our brown dots once we remove them. Probably could have used a few more on there, but uh, I really didn't want to take the time. And the next is the brown boots. Now that I have the stripes in there with the brown uh, between these areas, like in here, I'll be, I'll be hitting it uh, with this green. I'm going to take some more of our stencils and place them over these brown areas. Could have used a few more, but this is not a helmet or a firearm. So it's not, uh, I'm not being exactly real particular here, just giving the idea. There's a lot of great videos out there on moldy cam. Taking our rail on the right and transformed it to the moldy cam look. Here's our bottom section of the ladder that I'm going to go ahead and do in the brush camo style. Uh, one thing I am going to do, make sure, this is our bottom. This is what's going to go into the ground a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that I spray in these tubes themselves uh, to get some waterproofing uh, in the ends. On the driveway, I have various weeds and plants that I got from around the house. Uh, as you can see, some piece of tree, maple, tall grass. I think that's actually a walnut more weed trees and some old dried up flower stems and these are going to go on to create the brush look. I've sprayed some of the brown boots color on the ladder here as a base coat and then I'm going to go ahead and put some of those grasses and sticks on top and start to layer them up. Start with a, a thin layer and get thicker and you don't move or remove your branches or sticks or whatever you have to on top of those. You leave them and start to basically pile one on top of each other. I want to try to keep these grass and sticks as close uh, to the rail as possible because uh, you get a little bit sharper edge of that, edge that way. Here we go with a bit of the green on this now. I'll leave this dry, I'll pile some more on top of it, and then I'll hit it with a brown. Put some more of the sticks on top of it. I've already used them once, you can certainly use them again. Start hitting with the brown now. Go ahead and let that dry. Well, I put a few more on there, Some these ones had some leaves on them. And I'm going to go ahead and finish it up with a black. ahead and let that dry and then I'll take my sticks off we'll see what we have. Fairly good camo pattern easy to do it's really simple as far as the difference between doing the moldy cam that takes a pretty long time because you have to cut the stencils and wait and it, it's pretty time consuming this this really doesn't take any time at all of course if you're gonna do your but with the old school woodland camo, it just paint some splotches. That's super quick. But this really doesn't take very, very much time at all. Both came out fairly good. I did make the bottom of the ladder darker because that's what's going to be down next to the ground. It's always going to be a little bit darker. And then as you, of course, as you look up, uh, things get brighter. Now, of course, all the leaves are still on those trees. Now, let's see what we got here. planes flying back to Dover Air Force Base. Uh, here's another 
quick tip for you when trying to get one of these set up. Uh, they have the metal grate on the bottom here. Uh, one transfers a little bit of cold to your foot sitting on there when it's when it's down to those freeze below freezing temperatures into the teens. Another thing that may happen to you, and I have my boot here, when you're sitting up here or standing and you say you see a deer and you got to turn to look at it, turn your body, turn your feet. Uh, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a clink uh, on the feet with with this. And you can hear just a little bit of it. That's that's enough to make a deer look in your direction and see that there's not something quite right and then probably bolt on down the road. And to alleviate a little bit of the cold feet and a little bit of that clinking that you get maybe when you're twisting your foot on this metal grate, uh, get yourself a, a small piece of rug and I would recommend indoor outdoor carpeting or AstroTurf type and cut it to your size put some holes in it, tie wrap it down. And again, this is just a piece of Berber, I think. I'm just using this as an example. That's going to insulate your feet a little bit from the cold. Turning my feet, or simulating turning the feet, you don't make that clinking sound on that grate. So that's, uh, that's another thing you may want to think about. Here's some of the things that I'm going to go ahead and take with me today. Of course, for clearing some brush, I'm going to take that duct tape. Uh, as you're going down, you may scratch the stand, maybe in the bed of your pickup or your trailer. If you want to touch it up a little, bring yourself a can of paint with you. Uh, also, the string to hoist your firearm or your bow, your crossbow up. I have a, another carabiner. And it's attached to a string. For those of you that, uh, that don't have a rangefinder, uh, you're certainly starting first starting out. You can't afford all this different things that you want. So here's a real cheap way to get yourself a little bit of a rangefinder when you get yourself set up on this string right here at 20 and 30 yards. I have a couple washers, and here's one tied on at the, the 20 yard mark. So uh, I'll know exactly where 20 yards is. I can take my carabiner. I can hook it to my rail. I can. Where, oh, there, there we go. I can go ahead and, and hook it around my shooting rail. Walk out 20 yards. I'll know exactly where 20 yards is from the elevated position. So uh, for those that don't have that range finder, real cheap way. Just a just a tip that may help you out, especially when you're bow. You no, know, not really gun hunting, but uh, bow hunting where your 20, 30 yard marker is, and you certainly go out as far as you want if you're comfortable shooting 40, 50, whatever, uh, you can certainly do that. I have the stand up in the tree, got some help with that. Certainly you can't do that yourself. Chose a tree and where I could see where I knew some deer were coming in. And uh, let's do an overlay. And here's a clear cut in this area. And the deer will walk down the edge of this clear cut past the stand hopefully and into the what's right now soybean field and they also cut through some of this woods down this way so hopefully you ambush them either walking on the edge of that clear cut uh, cutting through the woods to get into that bean field the next thing I'm going to do is hanging on the stand right there that's the wrap I'm going to go ahead and put that up there and when I get done, hopefully, uh, all you'll be able to see is me from about the chest up. No leg movement, no arm movement. Here's the wrap. Certainly blocks any movement that you have basically from about the lower chest down. I went to really move in a certain direction. It would block the deer. But I definitely recommend putting one of these on. Next, I have my cord for lifting my either crossbow, rifle, shotgun, well, in this stage, shotgun up. So I'm going to put my cord down with good height and then tie that off up here. Now I can easily lift my pack, etc. Rifle, shotgun, crossbow, bow. Up. You always want to make sure you do that also, one of those safety rules.
I'm going to use the uh, Sugar Bee Crush Rock and the Acorn Rage Rock also. I'm going to mark these off 20 and 30 yards, uh, one in a particular direction. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and show that, but I'm going to use these as yardage markers and, of course, in Delaware, private property, you are allowed to use an attracted public property, you are not. So make sure you know your laws on if you can or can't use these. But I'm going to go ahead and use that now with that string and the washers. I'll tie it up on the stand so I know exactly 20 and 30 yards, and it'll work out real good for me. So this is 85 signing out off the Delmarva Peninsula today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, got something out of it as far as a few tricks, tips that you may be able to use uh, next time you set a stand up.